Star Wars Action News is brought to you in part by Dorkside Toys. At DorksideToys.com, you can get the latest Star Wars toys, as well as Marvel, G.I. Joe, The Walking Dead, and more. Run by toy fans, you can be assured your order will be given great attention and packed with care. Sign up to their social channels now for stock alerts, reviews, and toy and movie news. DorksideToys.com. You'd be a dork not to shop there. Welcome to Star Wars Action News, your source for Star Wars collecting news, reviews, and convention coverage, hosted by Marjorie and Arnie. Helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Be sure to check out our website at SWActionNews.com, where you can see photos of the items discussed, chat with other listeners, find links to our Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube pages, support our Podbean crowdfunding campaign, and much more. Star Wars Action News, covering the whole galaxy of Star We're Wars to toys. Exhaustive a list as possible of the announced San Diego Comic Con exclusives so far. And probably more are going to be announced after our show is recorded just because sometimes things come out at the last minute and some people like to hold the anticipation. And we're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con covering all the collecting news, the stuff that isn't on sale, all the new Hasbro reveals. We're going to be periscoping as much as we can. We're going to be doing live videos on Facebook. So be sure to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Our links are from SWActionNews.com. Don't miss out on this live coverage. I'm actually, thanks to the zen feeling I'm getting from Funko, I'm not getting in any lines Wednesday preview night. What are we going to do? We're going to broadcast live all the reveals at the Hasbro booth. All right. And maybe head over to Bluefin or some of those others and hop in those lines if they're not too crazy and live stream what's on there as well. So let's start with the panels before we get to the actual exclusives. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. Now, this is our 11th year covering Star Wars at San Diego Comic-Con. But I kind of feel maybe it's because of Celebration Europe. But in 11 years, including those really dark years when everybody was just complaining that the same six vintage figures were on pegs and (laughs) the only Star Wars content we had were novels and Dark Horse doing a few comics and Clone Wars on TV... Wait, now I think there's a little bit of a difference now because people are complaining about the same six three and three quarter inch black series being on the pegs at Walmart. Oh no, they're complaining about not being able to find the three and three quarter black series at Walmart. Well, you can find them if you like Finn and Han. But in 11 years, I have never seen such a Star Wars light programming schedule at San Diego Comic-Con. There are a total of nine panels and really three of them are the usual official Lucasfilm collecting updates. On Thursday, Jack Specific is having their panel discussing all the Jack Specific stuff, and they do those Star Wars jumbo figures. So they're going to discuss everything, though, so it's not a Star Wars panel. Correct. And Thursday at 4 p.m., Jason Aaron, who's a writer for Marvel Comics, has a panel about him as well in all his comics works, and he does work on Star Wars. So not a Star Wars-specific panel. Then at 8 p.m. Thursday night, the 501st Legion has a panel about Star Wars villainous costuming. See, now, these panels are after the show floor closes, and, like, at 6.58, there's just this stream of people leaving, and I think that they got a really bad time slot there. They're presenting at San Diego Comic-Con. They no are. time's a bad time. That's true. However, eight's kind of eight and ten. You don't want to be last and first. Yeah, well, we'll talk about what's on Friday. I mean, at 8 p.m. on Friday is the fan-organized Star Wars trivia, and that was packed when yeah. we went. Yeah, well, that's different. That is a tradition, and that's that's fun. I don't do good at live trivia, I think. Now, Friday at 10 a.m. is Star Wars The Science Awakens, which isn't an official Lucasfilm panel, but it's scientists from NASA and a stunt coordinator and a number of people discussing the possibility of Star Wars tech and Star Wars occurrences in the real world. It's at 11 a.m. that the panels that we're used to covering start. Star Wars Publishing is at 11. It used to just be Del Rey, but now it's Del Rey, DKE, and 
anybody who has Star Wars books, I wonder if we'll see Disney publishing there now that they're putting out their own young adult novels. At noon, and if memory serves, that's a little later than it used to be, is Hasbro's Star Wars panel, which is the number one thing I'm going to this entire convention for. (laughs) And I pray they have a holy crud moment as big as when they brought out that TIE fighter last year at Comic-Con. Yeah, that was quite the moment, wasn't it? Their panel only ran like 35 minutes, but they pulled out that TIE fighter, dropped a mic, and walked. It was great. At 1 p.m. is the Star Wars Collectibles update with Anita Castellar of Lucasfilm Licensing. This is where you're going to find out about Sideshow, General Giant, FX Collectibles, Tamashi Nations, all these other more high-end collectible companies. And that is it, folks. There's no reason to have a four-day pass if all you want is the Star Wars programming. I do they even call it Star Wars Day on Friday anymore? It was not listed as such in the online schedule. Yeah. And that's shocking to me because, I mean, come on, Rogue One is coming out this year. We are very close. I just am expecting them to blow away Celebration Europe because I'm just shocked there's not a single Rebels panel at San Diego Comic-Con. There is not a single Rogue One, no Star Wars gaming about upcoming video games and things like that, like they had with Knights of the Old Republic and such. Maybe there's nothing to talk about yet, or maybe things that are being moved to a different convention that begins with the D and ends at 23. That's possible. But what I will say also is we went to Celebration Europe 2 in Essen, Germany. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we went to San Diego just a few days before. We had like a couple days in between. It was rough. It was. And I wouldn't be surprised if all the people who would present at the panels I'm talking about not having are over at Celebration Europe presenting. And nobody wants, and some may not be physically able to do Celebration and then basically take a red eye, have one day, and now you're doing San Diego. No, there's three days. If you fly out on Monday, you get in on Tuesday. We fly out on Sunday. There's still con going on. They can't if they're working the con. Well, they're getting some good panels over in London. They've got some Rogue One panels and the director's over there. And there's some Rebels panels. And that's all absent here at Comic-Con. Yeah. Fortunately, though, I have never seen so many shopping opportunities for Star Wars collectors. And I'm just going to say right now that... The key to Comic-Con shopping is always being a little bit choosy where you spend your money. Because if you were trying to buy every Star Wars exclusive at San Diego Comic-Con and trying to get all the free things they're giving away that are exclusive there, first of all, it may not even be possible because there are lottery systems that go on. So you could do everything right and still fail. Yeah, You can do that. We've failed at Lego many times. We've never succeeded at Lego, to be honest. No, I guess you're right. I've gotten tickets to buy the exclusive, but never gotten the minifig. Right. But 11 years, maybe I'll be lucky this year? And Funko. Oh. And then wandering around that Lucasfilm Pavilion, you could spend a year's salary, no matter what your salary is in a year. I don't care if you're entry level or CEO, you really can spend it. Well, I think that... Even just walking up and down the different booths and you get to indie artists also, you're just easy to drop money there. Before you know it, you're carrying lots of bags and you have no money. Well, we're not even going to go into all of the artist alley type stuff and everything, but we will go through the various collectibles that have been announced. Now, this is the information we've gotten from various sources online, reported as accurate as the best of our ability, but... Everything here is subject to change, so just that little caveat. Starting with 3D Innovations. That's a company I don't really know. I'm confused by this. Their exclusives are stickers, which are limited to 300 of each design. And they're kind of like that Jake art, but not quite. It's looking a little super deformed. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that they kind of borrowed an idea there. So they have some stickers. Full Color Duo Stickers. These were announced on StarWars.com. They did not list a price or a booth number with them, but 
If you are into this kind of cutesy art design, it's something to look up for. Actually, Arnie, 3D Innovations is the company that has those things that go on the wall that look like they're busting out of the wall and they're like the lamps and lights. Oh yeah, the one that looks like Darth Vader did a scene in Animal House and busted his head through a wall because he drank too much with John Belushi. That's exactly it. It's that company. So they've got stickers. Okay, so you'll be able to get the various lighting stuff and stickers. Now, Acme Archives, we have been covering them for so many years now, and it has been announced that they will have a character key. As of recording, they have not said who it is. Usually they make you do a special something for an exclusive one that's a top secret one also. Yeah, I always set up mobile alerts for their Twitter, and that's how we know because usually it's limited to like 25 pieces and you have to go down there and literally sing a song and dance. I had to sing the Narwhal song, and I just made up a song because I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I probably would have YouTubed it, but I actually enjoy sending you there. And I know, making me do all the crazy stuff. I know, I know. So I'm expecting two character keys, but it may only be one, as it's not yet announced. Now, over at Bluefin and Tamashi Nations, they've got Egg Attack exclusives. There's a lot of these. Oh, boy. Yeah, I didn't know about these until Daryl texted me as soon as they were announced, asking if we could grab them for him. And since we're over there and since we're in line, I might try to get these myself. I definitely want the Captain Phasma. I like any Phasma that's actually chromed, and they have it here. Fully articulated, $85. They've also got... The Sand Trooper with gold plating, which is really pretty. There's also a silver plated Storm Trooper, which is really cool. And then on top of that, they've got a Millennium Falcon counterattack. And it's their magnetic levitating thing, which is kind of cool. I didn't get the levitating Millennium Falcon because, again, it looked kind of like Jake Art. Super deformed. It really looked like a Galactic Heroes vehicle or something. But... I don't know. At a hundred apiece for the gold and silver stormtrooper, I want to see them in person. These are decent size. They're about six inches tall. They're really nice collectibles, though. So if I'm able to get any at all, and that is the key with any exclusive, Daryl, our video editor, gets first dibs, and I may or may not walk out with those. It all depends on how long you are in a line staring at the item, because the longer you stare at the item, the longer you sit there and ruminate on it and the greater a chance of you purchasing it. That is so true. You you have nailed me on that. And also, there's the mindset of, I'm not waiting in this line again, so if I'm even at all on the fence, I'm buying it. And honestly, last year their line was reasonable and easy to do. I was able to get in and out really quickly. Unfortunately, we did it on, was it Friday or Saturday, and they were already sold out of a lot of items. I think it was Sunday. Now, Tamashi Nations has an exclusive movie realization figure. We reviewed the Ronin Boba Fett here on the show a couple episodes ago. They have a special version of their Sand Trooper, the Ashigaru Sand Trooper, and he has a charcoal black pauldron, and that's stating he's in the enlisted status Sand Trooper versus a higher rank. Now, over at Comic Images, where they do all of those plushies, they're going to have a number of 12-inch super deformed plushes. Yeah, and if you purchase the book ABC 3PO, you can get a plush Ray, Finn, and one other character. You get one of them, and it's of Ray, Finn, or one other. They worded it weird. Okay, they did word it really weird. I thought I was saying you get Ray and Finn, then they have to pick someone else. But it also says you receive one free plush. So unless Ray, Finn, and another character are actually conjoined, but the picture shows them separate. Now they're going to be over in the Star Wars pavilion and they have tons of stuff like Santa Yodas and all those kinds of things. I see a lot of kids carrying around comic images plushes. They're not exclusives, but they get them at the con. Mm -hmm. DKE Toys, which makes some awesome custom figures, is going to have actually quite a number of severely limited figures this year. They've got a Chewback by Mark Todd, limited to 30. A Star Rockers Chewraka by Alien Robot Monster. There's 30 of those. Wars Not Make One Great by Free Humanity. 
50. Obi Smurf Kenobi, which I think is my favorite one. It's like Papa Smurf Jedi. And that's by Greg Aronowitz. And that's 50 also for that one. Now, those aren't licensed or anything, right? No, they're not. And they've just got a whole mess of various figures here that they've customed pretty much. I know some people really go heavy in for those. I'm not really drawn. There's enough official stuff to spend the money on. And in fact, I've heard a lot of people complaining about this in Artist Alley and other things. When companies like Hasbro and Funko are bringing out high dollar exclusives, it doesn't leave people money to spend at ancillary booths. So I love some custom figures, but I just need to stay focused on licensed stuff. I am not able to be a Steve Sansweet who can do both. Let's see, I'll buy stuff if I like it. So I have like the least collecting rules of anybody, I think. So are you getting the Papa Smurf Obi-Wan? $55? I might, and I really like the R2 SL1200, which is like an R2-D2 record player. But I'll have to go over and see, you know? And if they're there, if they're there, if they're not, they're not. And again, that's booth 5045. Now, one place that has not announced what they're doing, but you definitely want to swing by their booth, is Delray. Delray usually has two booths. They have a Star Wars booth set up in the pavilion, and then they have another just publishing booth over in the press area. But... There is a Star Wars Reader sampler they've been giving away at conventions this year. So swing by and you can pick up one of those free items. I know Nathan P. Butler every year is ha just really trying to get one of those. It's his most wanted exclusive from every convention. Entertainment Earth has an exclusive with the Jax Pacific Big Fig Metallic 3PO. You can actually pre-order it now if you're not attending. Sold out. Well, I guess you can't get it then. You have to go to the con at this point. If there's any left after the con, they may put it there. But now it is only available at Comic-Con booth 2343. It's $60 for an 18-inch 3PO. I have seen people carrying around these Jax Pacific exclusives at Comic-Con before. And I just feel sorry for... I mean, I've had to ship big things home too. But it's a big item. But it's vac metalized and red arm. It's honestly really awesome, and I may weave my way over there for it. You have fun carrying that. I will. I, I have a thing for vac metalization anymore. Funko has technically two exclusives. One you can only get by attending the Conan tapings for the Conan O'Brien show. There's a Conan Stormtrooper. Those tickets have been sold out and sold out in a blink. We didn't get them, did we? No. You told me that we were on some list or something. And Here's what happens is when you sign up for them, you're automatically waitlisted. But because there are some sites who release the secret code, there are all kinds of people who got on and got in, is my suspicion. Ah. They specifically sent the email, don't release the code, but the code was released. But you can still try to get on standby. And phone code themselves, though, and maybe it's because they had a number of exclusives at Celebration Europe, but they have really throttled back on their number of exclusive pops there's two and one of them i need like i would cut off a pound of flesh like i'm in a shakespeare play to get the bb-8 with the thumbs up that's a bit extreme and overly descriptive and no one needs to know that however funko has changed this year yes it would be easier if i had to cut off the flesh you can get a preview night wristband to get in line only if you pre-registered in a sh very short window of time. And that's going to be a random drawing. I'm sure demand is going to exceed availability there. We did enter. There's no guarantee that the items will be in stock when you get up to the line. That happened to me last year. I was one of the last ones in line and a lot of stuff I wanted was not there. And then for the rest of the convention, they are giving away tickets via a random process at the sales pavilion. So I imagine it will work a lot like Lego where you go up and you push a button, or you grab something out of a bag, and they say yes or no. Or you tap your new RFID-enabled badge. Yeah. Let me tell you, though, my thinking on this has really evolved. Remember the Gentle Giant World Tour where there were raffles to get those minibus? So you not only had to get there, but then you had a random shot at if you were allowed to buy something, and that really made me mad many years ago, right? Seeing how Every year at Comic-Con has gotten more brutal and Funko. I was reminded by my Facebook memories that one year ago, one year and three days before the show comes out, 
I posted, I wonder how long it is till somebody gets stabbed or worse in one of these exclusives lines. And I stand by that. They're crazy, as Jar Jar would say. And this I'm really zen about. I'm like, you know, there's no stress. There's no, hey, I have to get in line at 2 a.m. for preview night and haul down to the Funko booth and maybe I'll get one and I'll be yelled at by the guy, you are not a line! And then he'll arbitrarily start a line. None of that. It's so relieving. I'm either going to know on the 13th, yes, I'm in, or no, I'm not in. And that is that. It's really like a weight is lifted. It helps that there's only two pops and I'm like, all right, well, the eBay markup isn't going to be horrible on just two pops. I'm sure that BB-8 is going to be a hundred or more, but well, they are going to release some of these at various stores in conjunction with Comic-Con like they did last year. Barnes & Noble, GameStop, and FYE are going to have some of the exclusive pops as a summer convention exclusive at the store also. It is strongly rumored that the Han Solo is going to be at the GameStop, ThinkGeek, EB Games stores. Gentle Giant had some stuff come out for Comic-Con. There's the Captain Phasma Episode 7 mini vest, which I think Arnie is already going to get. I want it. I don't think it's back metalized or chromed, though, so... I don't understand your sudden Phasma obsession. I really don't. Well, you don't have to. Okay. I really like the look of the character. I think she's awesome looking, even if she literally got shoved down a garbage chute. But that is the only one, as of recording, that has not gone up for order to Premier Guild members. I jumped as fast as I could when they put up for pre-order the Chewbacca Macquarie mini bust. Once again, continuing doing a concept art mini bust just for San Diego. Now, I complained about the price of Hasbro. I'm going to complain here a little bit. It's not a deluxe bust. It's just your standard bust. It's $120, which after tax and shipping came to $150. For one mini bust. That's pretty expensive. But it'll be 120 at the con, and now I don't have to worry about shipping it. That Premier Guild membership is worth it every year. It is worth it. They're also going to have some of the jumbo figures. They're going to have Farm Boy Luke with the yellow hair and the regular Farm Boy Luke. And this is different from their previous Farm Boy Luke because it's going to be on the Return of the Jedi card. Hallmark, again, one of the most sought after collectibles. They're going to have what they call Beginnings Boba Fett, which is prototype Boba Fett ornament. Interesting in that I've never seen a Hallmark ornament that I can recall with interchangeable heads. No, I don't think there are any that have an interchangeable head. So it's the first time that you're really going to want two of these so you can display both on your tree. They're also going to have Princess Leia and Jabba the Hutt itty bitty two pack, which are super cute as always. Slave Leia defying that rumor that was pervasive previously that Disney said absolutely no more bikini Leias. Mm hmm. Or this was made before that. And speaking of hard to get and maybe wanting multiples, Hasbro's booth. I kind of wish they'd do the random ticketing that Funko's doing. Register online for preview night because you do have to get tickets in the sales pavilion every other night. We talked about their Kylo Ren, but the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, I like it a lot more. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi from A New Hope with his table from his little hut with the holographic Princess Leia on it. People are probably going to go crazy for that. And he has two lightsabers, the one he gave to Luke and his own. It's also $45 in a gorgeous package. I'm still aching a little bit at the $45, but for some reason that table looks like a more solid and large piece than the flag. So I'm, and also the little Princess Leia's equivalent to the Vader helmet. I don't know. I'm just a little bit more about this one. Overall, slightly disappointed. We were told at Toy Fair that San Diego Comic Con would likely be the place where the first Rogue One toy was released. And I thought they might replay what they did last time and have that really awesome black armor death trooper. And it would be the same as what they're going to release in the main line, but in a real special package like they did for the First Order Stormtrooper last year. But no Rogue One merchandise to be seen, just these figures. And I guarantee this Obi-Wan will be released later down the line, just without the table and the Leia, maybe with only his own lightsaber. 
I don't know if the Kylo Ren Unmasked will be released. That's something I'm questioning, but I imagine that being Comic-Con exclusive, this is going to be really hard to get. Toys R Us is going to have another exclusive at the Entertainment Earth booth this year. They're going to have the Black Series 6-inch Astromex repack that we've been seeing for a while. And remember, everyone thought it was coming out for May the 4th at Target. Well, it's Toys R Us. Yep, there's a new head on the R5 unit. And thanks to Jason from Yak Face for alerting me to that. Otherwise, we've got some repaints of some R2-D2s. But it's kind of cool that we get the white and red... I really do love the color scheme of the red and black on that R5 unit and then the gray and white astromech. Now these will be at ToysRUs.com on the 21st and then in Toys R Us stores later in the year. So it's a premiere at San Diego item. I am not going to be getting it at the Entertainment Earth booth to ship home when I can just on Thursday from the comfort of my hotel room click buy now and have it delivered. I wish Jack Pacific did that, because here we have another Jack Pacific exclusive, the 20-inch scale premium edition Captain Phasma, which I don't know if you're getting. That's one I want to see in person, but I don't believe that I will be. It does not appear to be vac metalized. It's just a really nice version in a really nice box. So I will likely skip that one. Lego, of course, will have something we don't know what. Actually, I can't say they will have something. They have been a little light on their Star Wars stuff lately, but I do expect there to be something over there, be it a set or a minifigure. Loungefly, which is more up my alley than Arnie's because they do purses and wallets and everything, has a super limited Ray backpack, limited to $200 at $65. It's got a Ray on speeder design, it comes with a collector's pin, and it comes with a replica of Ray's goggles. I actually kind of like that backpack. It's very utilitarian. If it wasn't for the emblazoned Star Wars Loungefly emblem and some metal on it it really looks i don't know like what an adventurer would wear like an indiana jones kind of backpack with this brown leather i am not a fan of it it's not something i'm going to be going after i wish they do some more of their cool designs like they've been doing and make those exclusives but we'll see now marvel has not announced any of their exclusives yet but i would consider it a good possibility that they would have some exclusive comic covers and their booth 2329. Mattel has another exclusive car, but this is a Death Star Trench Run reimagined, which I don't think you're going to take this out of the case as the top lifts off and you've got your vehicles in there as spaceships doing the trench run on the Death Star, and it lights up. The light up feature is actually kind of cool. I'm not getting this because, first of all, they're crazy. Now you've got Star Wars fans and Hot Wheels fans. That's like the Super Bowl of collecting when those two are on the opposite lines. I'm still scarred from when the Hot Wheels guys made fun of me because I didn't know who Dale Earnhardt was. Now, Nixon, not Nikon, but Nixon, has an exclusive Chewbacca watch. It's $300, limited to 300 pieces, and honestly, it looks like any watch, only (laughs) the wrist strap looks like a bandolier. I mean, I like the strap, but there's nothing really about the watch itself they say that it's bowcaster and blast fire seconds hands i'm not seeing it maybe if the time was just right it looks like the second hand is kylo ren's lightsaber and it does have an authentic chewbacca roar sound with the limited box yeah so the box roars not the watch correct and it has a laser etched let the wookie win case book This is that type of high-end item I can look at and go, huh, and then keep walking through the Lucasfilm Pavilion. The Lucasfilm Pavilion is like an expensive swap meet at times. Yeah, 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 it is. For example, do you need a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Star Wars car decal? No, I'm good, thanks. But this is a First Order Warriors car decal featuring First Order Stormtroopers, and it's available from Plastic Color. Okay... And am I missing something? Will I ever see this on a car is what I'm wondering. And Because if you're buying a car decal at San Diego Comic-Con, an exclusive 
Would you actually peel it off and put it on your car? It depends. Is it like $5 versus how much? StarWars.com did not list a price. And Plastic Colors not even listed as an exhibitor. They're going to be in the pavilion. Okay. And I imagine we'll also see in that pavilion the Star Wars skateboards by Santa Cruz. Yep, they're going to have five exclusive skateboards, $100 each, and they're also giving away free posters while supplies last. Can I just say I love, love, love the AT-AT design? Well, good. You can go rip some ollies with it. They're cool decks. I don't know that I would ever skate at all again. I did when I was a teenager, but... If I were to start skating, I don't know that I'd use a Comic-Con exclusive deck. Unless you're Tony Hawk, it's a bad idea at our age. Now, Sideshow Collectibles, we already talked about this on the last show. And in fact, it is shipped and on its way to us. The unpainted R2-D2 factory prototype six scale figure. Sphero, who made the hot Christmas gift last year, will be at San Diego Comic-Con booth 2913. And if you give them your email address and sign up for their newsletter, you can get a free Sphero poster that's actually really cool. It's the BB-8 Sphero, but they took a photo of him like in the sand and San Diego's in the background all lit up. It's really well done photography. Yep, the Grand Hyatt, Manchester Grand Hyatt buildings are right there. I'm surprised I didn't get the convention center in the background. Yeah, but it's still a gorgeous it is. photo. It is very pretty. Maybe there wasn't a beach that you could get that exact shot from. I mean, it's mm-hmm. at sunset. It's in the what they call the magic hour. Oh, gorgeous photo. A company called Stance is going to have some Star Wars socks, which I'll be honest, these scare the crap out of me. We're getting the Han and Carbonite socks, right? Yeah. It, the way his hands are, it looks like he's going, what, what? <laughs> Don't, doesn't it? <laughs> what, what? I'm on your leg. These are $20 a pair, limited to 100 pairs of each of their designs. What's wrong with their arms? Why are their arms like they're being, oh, they're at Comic-Con, they're being squished by people. (laughs) I think what it is is because we're seeing them flat, and when they wrap around your leg, they'll- No, look at their shoulders. I know, but I think when you stretch it out, it might- You just keep running on with that theory. They look like nutcrackers. Think Geek is going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, and if you buy $60 worth of stuff- you get a free Ray speeder pin. And if you buy $90 worth of stuff, you also get a BB-8 pin. They're selling some exclusive plushes, including a set of four bounty hunters for $30, the Han Solo and Carbonite that I have to have with for $12, and a Slave 1 with Han and Carbonite I need for another $12. So now I just need to spend a little bit more. And there's also some propaganda posters, a Ray poster. And the great thing about plushes... You can put those in checked luggage. Yeah, they're very easy. They're also good for cushioning other things. I got this down. And finally, the last thing is tops, trading card posters, five exclusive eight and a half by 11 posters, easy to get home, 1,000 available of each design, and they're created in the style of its various trading card series. Love these. Love these. And I'm just going to say to anyone going to the con who's planning on getting these, the back to school stuff is out at your store. Go out, get yourself a little folder like you'd put inside a Trapper Keeper or something. These are eight and a half by 11. That's a standard sheet of paper. You can put them in and keep them protected. Yes, you can. I'm kind of dipping my toe in the trading card game, so I may be spending some time at Top Booths kind of looking at things. My guess is with five exclusives, they're going to be doing one per day, and Hallmark is doing that also. Pins Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stocked and the Force be with you.